All right, welcome to Geometry 10-4. I can proudly say that this is your last video. Great work making it through all this. Let's finish strong. Uh, our last thing that we're doing here is modeling randomness. Take notes on this. Um, there's not a whole lot for you to fill in there, but this is an important instructional part, so make sure that you're um, paying attention as I move through this. So modeling randomness. We're going to use a few different tools that may be new to you, so just follow along with me. So here's the situation. There are 28 students in a classroom, and uh, the teacher needs to pick four at random to be the, the homeroom committee. So how can we use, and this is the first tool here, the book's using a, a random number table, okay, that, that will give us these digits, to be used fairly to choose the students. So um, you, this table came from a calculator that you may or may not have. If you have a graphing calculator, uh, you can make it gener generate random strings of numbers. On the next page, you could also go to the website um, www.random.org to also help you with some of these things. But a tool basically what it does is it just puts out a random group of numbers, right? Random table of numbers, totally random, 0 through 10, or I'm sorry, 0 through 9. Um, in this case, they're in chunks of 5. So how can we use this random number table to solve this problem? That we have 28 students, okay? Let's say they're on a roster, 1 to 28, in alphabetical order or something. And how do you just pick four, right? How do we do this really fairly using math, not just drawing their names out of a hat? Well, the first step is just says, uh, get this information here. So we have our, our random table. Secondly, it says, let's group the lines just into two digits. So we're just putting it in two digits now, right? Now, why two digits? Why two digits? Interesting. I'll just show you here. So 18 comes from uh, right here. And then the next digit would be 82. The next digit would be 3 and a 1. That's where you get 31. And you just continue along. And then 8, 1 is 81. 6, 0 is 60. And then you just continue along to get that. The reason that we're doing two digits is because our students' classes, uh, the first student would be 0, 1. And the 28th student would be 28 and everything in between. So then using this, let's pick the first four that come up. So 18 is an option. Now, 82 is too big, right? Because we only go to, there's only 28 students. So it needs to be less than 28. 9, student 9. 26. Now, we're not going to do the repeat 26 because student 26 has already been chosen. And then 17. So that way we're able to choose student number 18, student number 9, student number 26, and student 17 would be randomly chosen to uh, be on the, the school board committee. And again, this comes from a, ge a, a calculator or machine generated these numbers. These weren't just made up. They were generated. So let's look at the next page. Making a simulation. So uh, now we're in problem two. And this says, a cereal box company has six different prizes. On average, how many boxes would someone need to buy to get all six? Does that make sense? So you have a, you have a cereal company and they have six prizes, right? And so they're putting them into boxes at random. But when you go to the store, if you buy six, you might get six of the same toy. Or you might get five of one toy and then one other. So how many would you need to buy to get six? So again, we're, we're going to have to utilize a computer to give us a random uh, digits. And I used random.org. And at random.org, I'm using a random integer generator. Integer generator. And in the inner generate, integer generator, it's kind of a tongue twister, I've selected that I only want numbers 1 through 6. And I'm using one column, and it's just giving me, and I said, let's just start with, you know, 30 numbers, and hopefully, I don't, if I don't get all six, then I'll have to generate more than that. But you could generate 100 if you want, but I would start with a number probably bigger than 30 or so. And basically, it's, it gave me just a string of these digits, right? And I wrote them all down until I had every digit, 1 through 6, laid down. So the first time I did it, you know, let's say I generated 50 numbers, I only wrote down the first 19 because I had a 6, a 1, a 4, I'm not counting this one repeated because if I bought that box with that toy in it, I already have that first one. The question is, how do I get all six? So I didn't get a three, right, which is my last one that I needed, until 19 boxes. I'd have bought 19 boxes in this one. Well, I did, the, I did the test again. So I just clicked it again, and I generated another 50 numbers. And again, I'm just looking, how long would it take me to get all six prizes? And in this case, it took me, I got the fourth prize on the first try, and then the six, and the one. The fourth again, the second, a six again, a six again, the fifth prize, the first prize again, and then the third. So this time it only took me ten tries. I did it again, and I got you know another fifty set of numbers. And I said, how long will it take me to get fifteen? And this time it took me fifteen tries. So if I'm going to average those out, the book uses different numbers than I do, but if I'm going to average those out, I got nineteen the first time, ten the second, and then fifteen the third. So divided by those three options, it take me on on average using this data 
about 14.6 boxes of cereal to get those six prizes. Look at random.org and look at random integer. Play around with that. Um, some of these problems for your homework you're going to need uh, to generate random numbers, so you could use this website to access that. Let's look even more. So now we're looking at expected values. What does expected value mean? Well, expected values means that if something has a certain probability, uh, you could expect to get that thing that many times. So let's, let's get through this language, and then we're going to do a really concrete example to help explain this. So if A is an event, that includes outcomes. You know, there's outcome A, you know, A1, A2, A3, A4, however many the situation is. And there's also a value that's quantitative that's associated with each outcome, and that's what I mean. So not only is there um, an event, a number of events, but each event has a, a value which is it's, uh, associated with its outcome. Then we could find out the value of A by this. The value of A is the probability of the first event times the value of it plus the probability of the second event times the value of it. And this will go on and on just depending on how many different situations you have. So in this example, this is problem number three. The only difference here is the book called that middle, they called this red, and I thought that it was orange, so I'm using orange. Um, so we're, this is, you're at a carnival game, right? You're throwing darts. If you land in the white, in the bullseye here, you get 20 points. The area of this bullseye is 36 inches squared. If you get into the orange area, you get 10 points. That's 108 inches squared. If you get into the blue area, you'd lose five points, right? Negative five. Uh, and that area is 432. The area of everything altogether is 576. So let's just recap on how we find expected value. So expected value says, in this case, we have three areas. So you're going to see I have three, uh, three different probabilities times their values. So to, to figure out how many points I get if I played this game, or how many points I can expect, I, I, this says the probability of the white area times the white area's points, plus the probability of the orange area times the orange area's points, plus the probability of the blue area times the blue area points. And that is just like this. This is exactly what we're using. The probability of the event times its value, the probability of it's the second event times the second event's value. So the white area, um, what's the probability of landing in the white area? Well, the probability of landing in the white area would be its area, so points, its area is only 36 inches squared, but the total area is 576, and that's the probability of you landing in the white area. We're gonna multiply that by how many points you get, 20, right? Then what's the probability of the orange area? Well, that's 108 over 576. That would be the odds of you hitting there. And that's times 10 points. Plus, the probability of landing the blue, 432 over 576, times negative 5. Now, my picture is not perfect, but what do you think? Do you think it's worth playing this game, or do you think that you're going to, that on average, you're going to, expect to lose. Well, if we multiply these out, we would get something like this. I'm just referencing the book at this point. I'm not doing this math in my head. 1.25 plus 1.875 plus negative 3.75. And guess what? This equals the points that you could expect to get. is going to be negative Point six two five, and that means that although there's sometimes you might hit the white area, oops, sometimes you might hit the white area or the orange area, the majority of the time you're going to be hitting this blue, and you're going to be getting negative points from it, and on average, you would lose. If you kept playing this game, you would get eventually, on average, um, point six two five could be your expected value of playing. That makes sense. That's how Vegas works. They're gonna. The house is going to always have an edge here. Let's look at one more example. Let's apply some expected values. So here's the situation. Sorry, here we are. You're a football coach, right? You've got to make a decision. Do I go for the three-point field goal, which I have a 90% chance of making, or do I go for the touchdown, which I uh, were seven points, which I have a 35% chance of making? Well, let's just do some math here, right? So the chance of the field goal uh, is, remember, the probability, oops, excuse me, the points that you would get, 
equal the probability of event A, so it's 90%, well, let me make sure, the probability of A times the value of event A. Uh, and then the probability, well, this is expected value. But let's just compare these two, actually. So this one, the probability of A, this would be, you have a 90% chance of scoring three points. If we multiply this, we'd get that that's 2.7 points expected value. Um, for this one, compared to this, I'm not adding, this would be, um, you have a 35% chance to score seven points. And that's going to get you to 2.45 points expected value. So if you're the coach, the one that you want to pick is you want to go for the field goal because that's just a little bit more uh, compared to going for the touchdown. Okay, take your time in this section. I know it's the last unit, but take your time. Work with the tutor if you need to. It was great working with you. Enjoy Algebra 2. Have a good year.